Oh, guys. As you'll see in the next few videos, that was a big task to do. Again, guys, I apologize for the, uh, the fluidness of the video content that I'm about to put together for you guys. It's been, I've been just like, again, still just trying to get small bits of this journey that I'm doing, but not really like getting into like the whole videography part of it. I'm trying to film while I'm, I'm building this car uh, because man, this thing's roached. And it's taking a lot of time, and I feel like my time schedule is getting short to be able to for to reach uh, my goal of actually being at the uh, at the harvest. All right, guys, it's on. <laughs> that sounded really exciting, didn't it? Well, I'm getting ready to uh, to get on this motor and get it buttoned up. This weekend is the weekend that the motor will be together. Um, I um, I found the last pieces that I needed. Um, I had some some tin that was missing. And then also I had a piece of tin, the one that goes underneath the front of the motor um, that was all um, jacked up. Um, it actually, the one I had was all cut and soldered together. And I went over to my friend's shop and dug through his pile of stuff and ended up with this bad boy. Uh, <laughs> that's, I'm really stoked about that. It's like the only shiny chrome thing on the whole car. It's not perfect or anything, but I guess at some point somebody had bought some, uh, taken some original tins and had them chromed. And um, this is one of them. It's got a few dents in it, but it's better than the one I had that was about half rotten in half. And um, I'm really super stoked about this. My uh, my birthday's coming up next week, and my wife is like like the best wife ever. So check this out. The wheels. I've got the wheels I wanted. So I've, I've ordered my my uh, tires for the front. I'm still going to save up to get a couple more for the back. But yeah, uh, those are pretty sweet. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, so we're, uh, we're gonna see how, uh, I think they're the MP, um, I think it's Sprint Star is what they're called. But I think they're gonna look sweet on the bug. Anyway guys, I'm gonna get a big old glass of ice water because uh, I think today in the shop it is right at, uh, yeah, it's about 85 degrees in here, which is not horrible bad. But um, I'm about to, uh, to get busy and uh, build a motor. All right, guys, sorry for the humming, but I got the fans going and um, trying to stay cool out here. I've got the motor set up here on its side, and I'm getting ready to uh, get my book out, review my notes one more time, and then I'm going to um, install my first pistons and head. Um, pretty stoked about it, um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep the camera rolling and uh, let you guys share my adventure. Uh, this is not an instructional video. Please do not consider it an instructional video. This is just a dude in the book trying to make things happen. All right, reading time is done. Um, I got to give my uh, my pistons and my cylinders a, a bath and soak and water. That's what the book says. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, they're freshly bathed pistons. Now let's put them on the motor. Okay, one of the things with the pistons, when you go to put them on, um, you wanna go ahead and put one of these, um, these little um, clips on one side. Um, that way it's easier to get to and it'll hold the, the piston in place. Uh, but I'm going to, I need to uh, figure out which is gonna be the easiest one to get a second one in which side. And uh, from looking at this, Man, I would say that this side on this piston on the, the outside is probably gonna be the easiest one to get a deal in there. So let me get that one on this side and then we'll check our, uh, make sure it's clipped in there. And then um, see if we can get this piston down in the cylinder uh, just past the rings. All right guys, it's a new one for me. I've never done it before. When I bought my pistons, they came with the rings already installed on them but you wanna make sure uh, the rings actually will say top on them, the one that goes to the, uh, pointing up. And so I just wanna verify that um, it, it'll actually say on this edge here that it's top. There's also an arrow on that arrow. I don't know if you can see that arrow there or not, but it, um, it points towards the flywheel. So that's very important. The way that these work here, these rings, let's see over here, okay. All right, can you see that? Let's see, let's get, 
point towards our flywheel. Okay. So this, we've got our arrow pointing. Wow, it's hard to see on this thing. There's an arrow, it's pointing to this side. When it's in this position, I want to go ahead and put my uh, ring ring gaps. So that's these spaces right here. Um, you want to put them. I guess you'd consider like um, I don't know, um, like 11 and one or something like that. But you don't want them uh, directly lined up. You don't want them pointing down. Uh, I'll show you when I get it all in here. I'll show you here. So basically. You don't want them in line with your piston, uh, with the piston uh, pin, or the, yeah, the wrist pin. But uh, what I've done here is this uh, back one, the big ring on the back, it's gonna go straight up. Then you have the next one, it's gonna go to this side, right about right there, and then the very front, the very top one close to the crown will go right there. So one there, one there, and then one in the middle. And uh, the reason behind that, I don't know. They said that after after the motor starts, that it'll actually they'll move around. But initially, that's where they want them. They said the best way to applicate this oil in here is with your finger. So this one right there, it comes all lubed up on the inside. Using some motor oil. Make sure that it's all, all done up well. I've uh, oiled everything up and I keep looking at the wrong place on the camera. Sorry about that if it seems awkward when you watch. Alright, so now I'm going to put this on here and I have to compress the rings. Got a pair of vice grips to compress them with. And they didn't seem to have a problem at all compressing. So we'll see here in a minute how that works. All right, now I'm supposed to put these in here. And actually, uh, well, that's probably not gonna work. Let me, let me kind of get this in the hole first a little bit. And then compress it. That is in the right place. That is in the right place. Okay. All right, now it said that I can take a rubber mallet, a rubber mallet like the handle, this right here, and tap it down till it's past the rings, but not all the way in. always a challenge for me guys, always a challenge, but I will not give up. You kind of got to get it just right. You 
got to have it up high enough to actually get the wrist pin in. So I got a little deep. I'll learn better on the next one. Okay, at this point I can put a wrist pin through there. Make sure we've got our flat side up right there. All right. Let's put it on the engine. Gasket. Use them if you got them. If you don't um, have them, they said that you can just go ahead with the aviation uh, stuff, but I've got them, so I'm going to use them. This stuff is a big mess. Man. Wipe this all down. It's good and clean. All the way up. All right. Okay. This is it. This pin is oiled up. Point in the right way. Wow. Just check to see if your wrist pins will fit. Oh, there we go. Just you gotta kind of just finesse it a little bit. I have to get it on that rod. <laughs> my piss is a little too low on my, or my still, cylinder's just a, a hair. There, right? All right. There. Now, I feel like I need to, to put something and tap it to make sure everything's cool. All right, showing my old man status. Got the magnifying glass out, some light. Make sure that bad boy's clipped in there. I do not want to un have an issue with that and looks like we're good to go. I'll wipe a little of my ceiling off and we'll put some back on there. Looks good. So, um, yeah. Ah, it's hard, man. I just don't want... Uh, anyway, you understand. If you've never built a motor before, it's very nerve-wracking. Oh, man. Yeah, it's frightening. Okay. All right, man. Let's go. One more to do, and we'll get a head on here.
All right, dude. Two on. <laughs> now let's um, let's get ahead on this thing. All right, guys. Push rod tubes are in. The heads are like sitting on it, and I'm um, hand tightened. Got the um, MP bolt kit. I don't. They're just like copper plated for some reason. But anyway, I'm um, getting ready to sit down, figure out all the torque and stuff. Uh, the only thing hard about that was just getting them push rod tubes lined up. Um, I went ahead I went ahead and put some of the aviation sealant on the ends of the push rod tubes. It said that you can put them in dry, um, which, which they are dry on one side. Between the rubber and the push rod tube itself, it's dry. But between the rubber and the head and the rubber and the block, it's got aviation sealer on it. I don't know if that'll make a difference or not, but I figured it wouldn't hurt. All right, let's get these things torqued. All right, guys, got them torqued down. Uh, the pattern I used initially, um, to, I went to, to 10 pounds initially on this left pattern uh, to seat the push rod tubes and everything. And then I went through a, to the second pattern of a crisscross and I, um, I went to 15, then 20, then 23. At this point I realized that I've never rebuilt the rocker arms. So uh, I got to stop for just a little bit and uh, tear these rocker arms assemblies apart, clean them all, lubricate them, and put them back together. So that's what we're gonna do. The rockers were a lot easier to rebuild than I thought they'd be. You gotta pay attention when you're building them when you put them back together because it, I've already had to take them apart once and redo them because I put the little places where they did pivots on one of them on backwards. I'll show you that clip talking back in a moment. I have to adjust mine. Basically, these rockers, when you look at them, there's a side that's beveled. Um, it's got little cut indentations on it. Uh, that goes towards the valve cover. The little side that's separated there goes towards the valves. So that's uh, something overlooked. I'd take it apart again, but wasn't bad. I said you install these though with everything backed off on it, so I'm just gonna loosen these up and then get it on. When I go to when I went to put these on um, after this has all been torqued down, these studs that hold the um, that hold the rocker arms on, um, they've got a little O-ring, so you be sure you put that in there um, before you put these on. I loosen these off. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a little lube in the cups of these. Just make sure everything's cool. That's totally backwards. Don't do it that way. Let me flip these around. Even better, if you're gonna rebuild one side, rebuild the right side. Okay, pause. I gotta go rebuild the other one. All right, I'm back. That was kind of a pain in the butt, but it's fixed. Okay, do this again with the correct rocker.
Okay, those are on. I'm gonna find the right nuts for it now. So I'm kind of, kind of guess you gotta kind of torque them down a little bit. I'll look it up. Always look at your reference books. That way you know. All right, I got the proper nuts on there. I'm backing these all the way out. Um, you don't want any pressure on them um, when you go to tighten this down. And these, um, you put your washer, proper nut, and it torques to 18. But it sure does feel good to see this thing going. Whoops, it went. Feels good to see this thing slowly sneaking back together. Uh, sometimes when you take something this far apart, you're like, man, will I ever get it back together? So, exciting. All right, let's go ahead and take them on to 18. Yay. That fantastic gasket there. Thank you, China. We appreciate you just totally giving us the shaft. Amen. Uh, yeah, man. So don't buy this gasket. I mean, there's no way to make this work properly. I mean, it's it's just too big. Even if it's all the way down, all the way around, it's just not gonna happen. God, that sucks. I really, really, really wanted to button this up, but I guess I'll put them on without a valve cover gasket and then get some coming. Not cool. By the way, these say um, C A M S A supposed to be some type of synthetic gasket. I'm going back to cork. All right, guys, uh, let's do the other side now. All right, fellow Volkswagen people, we got a victory here. We have a motor that the short block is assembled. So, uh, man, there's a lot of work, but I'm gonna get back on it again um, tomorrow and keep on dressing it out and get it buttoned up and then we're gonna go to brakes. Well guys, I'm still going at it. Um, I've put in the, well pretty much I've put the fuel pump on, put the uh, generator stand on, oil cooler on, I've adjusted the valves, I've um, put the oil pump in, put the bottom tins on, now I'm getting ready to um, to go ahead and put the top tins on there and keep on going until I uh, run out of things to do. But um, I didn't film a whole lot of it, I've just been kind of like really dialed in and doing my thing. Um, but it's uh, it's coming together. I, I'm super proud that um, hopefully hopefully it's a runner. <laughs> that's the, that's the, the mission there, right? guys there you go it's just kind of um tin sitting on it right now i gotta go to my friend's house and get a uh the generator because i don't know anything about the one i've got but uh yeah so it's starting to look like a motor pretty excited about that check this back side out i'd never had a, a oil cooler that the uh that was outside the doghouse so it's a little bit new to me but Seem to went together. I've got some pieces I still got to figure out where they go, but it's uh, another step. I'm pretty proud that, uh, to say that I, I built it. Uh, first one ever. I've dressed out a lot of short blocks, but I've never really uh, taken one all the way down to the crank. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's still smoking hot here in Texas, but uh, that's why I kind of really been in the mood to film or sit and talk. I've just been going, but um, I'll give you an update as soon as I get any further. All right, guys. 
Did not film anything. I just been like totally going at it. Got all the coils, spark plugs, all of that stuff on there. I now have heater boxes on here. So that bad boy is ready to go. I've got left over here is um, clutch flywheel muffler. And then over on this side, I've got the, uh, get the axles on. I would have put them on today, but I didn't have any thread lock. Um, and I got my brakes, all the stuff for the brakes. So we'll get that done. I did get one of the, the wheels on the car today, uh, which that looks pretty sick. I need to get the rest of it all uh, all done. I've got two of the tires. I got to save a little money to get the other ones. But um, yeah, baby steps, but it's coming. It's going to be pretty cool. I am still trying to get everything together where I can make it over there to the uh, to the uh, harvest fest. So we'll see how that goes. All right, guys, got the first drum off there. Uh, eh, forget about the old adjuster at the bottom. So uh, that took me way longer than it should have. But then I looked at the instructions. No big deal. So now I'm going to be on to Tearing that all down, detailing it all, adjusting the height, painting everything, and reinstalling brakes with new lines. Man, so the temperature came down here. It's like 80 something degrees outside because it rained, but it's like totally humid. So that's kind of, kind of blows. Um, went ahead and got fresh bearings for all the way around today. Uh, so as I put this thing back together, um, all new um, seals um, to put it back together with. And uh, I figure since I'm lower in the back, got a pair of these bad boys, uh, drops, drop spindles. So we're gonna get it down in the weeds. So <laughs> more adventure. We'll see how that all goes, but I'll bring you guys along. And I'm gonna try to do a little bit more filming. I just was so intent on the motor, trying to concentrate. I didn't film as much as I'd like to, but um, I shared a little bit with you. So hopefully you enjoyed that footage and uh, we'll uh, see how, if we can, uh, dump us a bug and I'm um, also hang on for a second we've got the tires for the back I went with the um, the 60s uh, I think they're uh, 160 one oh man what the heck for oh 205 205 um, 60 15s they seem to fit good on there nice fat meat on them and then on the front I have the, uh, well, I've already got one of them mounted here, which is the smaller, the 145s. So we'll, we'll get that front end low. I doubt I'll be able to get as low as I want to the drop spindles, but it'll be lower than it is right now for the trip to uh, Harvest Fest. Vibration dampener. Oh, really? Keeps the chatter out when you're cutting it. Uh, back from the Volkswagen shop 
uh, taking some of these uh, vacuum plate things, cleaning them up, and making them look like a vacuum plate thing like that. So uh, that's, that's how we do it. All right, guys. Uh, something I learned today: when you take a vacuum plate and you clean it up, one thing you always want to wear a mask. Uh, you know, the Festus or whatever they had in the old brakes, you just want to make sure you ain't breathing, you know, just breathing if you can. A lot of these, this little star washer right here, is stuck in there. And I had Daniel at um, Oak Hill tell me, you take yourself an old bolt that's got extra long threads on it, you'll screw it in there, it'll pull that thing back right out. So uh, we're going to try it out. Hang on, let me get this a little lower. Watch that thing, see if it comes out of there as it gets. Oh, that's the wrong way. Let's do it the right way. It's my way. I do everything backwards. You can tell when it bottoms out because it gets a lot stiffer and harder to turn. Well, I can feel a little pressure now. Let's see here. Up, oh, it's turning it. I didn't talk about that. I don't know what to do with that. Here, let's try a pair of pliers and hold on to it. There we go. Starting to suck it out of there. No, oh, this is not as cool as I thought it'd be, but maybe I need to put the pliers on the other side, huh? The direction that it's turning. There you go. There it is. Bam! Sucked it right out of there. So that's how you get them out of there when they're stuck. What I'm doing right now is um, getting the drop spindles. They come in raw steel, and so I'm getting them all taped up, plugging all the holes where there's threads in the machined areas that don't need paint. So I'm trying to get buttoned up. So what I want to try to do, since I was able to locate some backing plates, uh, mine were just totally, and I'll show you what mine are in bad condition. But um, I wanted to um, now that I have the these um these backing plates i actually could build everything on these plates um, i mean i've got wheel cylinders i've got all the hardware that was on these backing plates when i got them to clean up and put on there and then um, i could bolt them right on the spindles just have it all as like a big old component ready to rock and roll and go on there lost my tape there for a second so uh, it's kind of the plan, that way I can bench build them all since I'm old and I don't like to be on my knees for extended amounts of time trying to build something. What's going on guys? I'm still going at it. Right now, I spent last night, this morning, getting the backing plates. I had to buy some other backing plates from Daniel over at Oak Hill uh, because that they, uh, the ones I had were just totally roached from people over the years trying to adjust the brakes and the, uh, the little star things inside being stuck and been in the back of place. So I got some out of his um, out of his pile of uh, uh, Volkswagen parts and I cleaned them up, got it all uh, got it all back together, got them painted, got them bolted to the, the drop spindles, pulled off my spindles off the bug, at least off on the passenger side. You know, I realize I can't pull a ball joint, man. 
I, don't have, I thought I could. I thought I had a little tool, a little separator, but well, this thing. This deal right here, I bought at Harbor Freight. Tie rod in, boom, it pops it right off. It'll jump across the room at you. But a ball joint, no. And it's um, it's it's going back. I don't think I'll ever use it. I've got other tools to pull tie rod ends. So I'm heading to um, Harbor Freight, and I'm gonna look at the difference, the differences in the price, and kind of weigh out in my head if I want a little like a six ton press like one of the bench top ones because I really don't have a lot of floor space left uh, that or or maybe a um, they make an actual ball joint kit uh, that comes with a bunch of fittings and a big old huge C clamp to press them out of there uh, which is an option also so uh, yeah gonna go throw more money at it and make it happen it's making me crazy it's like every time I think I'm almost there I'm all like, I need another part. I'll get all the parts, and then I'm all like, oh man, I need another tool. So that's just part of it, I guess. And I'm building up a pretty good arsenal of tools, so I'll be able to tackle most projects in the future. Anyway, guys, uh, it's my birthday, too. Big 4-9. Um, I'm holding off 50, man. But uh, you know, I know it's coming, but I feel grateful. I'm, I'm a very happy person, and I'm happy um, all the people in my life phone has been blowing up all morning with all the people on social media and friends and family reaching out to me to, to tell me happy birthday. It's always a fantastic feeling to know that so many people uh, are thinking about you. So anyway, I'll catch you guys a little bit after I get this press. I spent the last two days of this weekend, uh, this Labor Day weekend, by the way, um, two days, 14 hours, I got two ball joints out. Can't get them back in. I give up. I'm going to go buy a 20-ton press and get this shit done. All right, guys, let's get this done. I don't know if I should say that or say, all right, guys, it's done. But I'm gonna go with this is done, or let's get it done. Let's build this damn thing and get these uh, ball joints pushed, pushed in. Because then I, uh, yeah. All right guys, that look, took like five minutes with the right tool. So yeah, thank you Harbor Freight. Uh, let's get onto the other ones and get this thing on the ground. All right guys, I'm gonna try to set this up where you can kind of see how well one of these 12 um, ton hydraulic bottle jacks will push these ball joints in. Double low, double low. Who's the dude on YouTube? It's double low.